Hello, welcome back. We've been anchored in this great spot in Martinique called Anse Noire, and we're settling into life on anchor again. After some morning yoga, we met with our friends Jesse and Jan of Odhara to go for another snorkel mission. All right. What a place! What the? <laughs> it opens up. Oh it opens up into like a room in the bottom. Oh my god! Come on, go, 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 go! Close on top? Uh, no, it open. It's open on top. There's light from the top. There's trees on top. Everything. It's really cool. Light from the top? Yeah. You'll see. Okay. And so we followed Lars back through the tunnel and towards the cave. Finding caves like this is always so much fun. Sometimes they can feel a little bit dingy, but this one felt magical. It went in really deep, but stayed light, and the rock formations were beautiful and so colorful. <laughs> so cool, look at these roots. It's like fresh water. Yeah. yeah. We said goodbye to our friends who we wouldn't see for a little while because they were heading south from here and we were going to be heading north. After the fun and games, it was back to boat jobs. Remember this little piece of wood that Lars was trying to shape up from the original binnacle? He continued sanding and epoxying and plugging the holes it had in it to get it looking good. So I've got some epoxy mixed up and I'm going to make the most of it to do a repair in the cockpit I've been meaning to do for a year. <laughs> here it is. Right here, this piece of teak has come loose. It's cracking all along here. And it's only gonna get worse. And it's only gonna take one person to step on that and it's all just gonna crack away. So I'm gonna get some epoxy down in there and that crack. And then clamp it together with these pieces of wood that just so happen to fit nicely. All right then, hopefully that'll do it. From here we set sail further north up the coast of Martinique, 
We were heading to a place called Saint-Pierre, which is quite well known historically as it used to be the economic and cultural capital of Martinique, up until 1902, when it was completely destroyed by the volcano that you can see, called the Montpellier. Apparently, until then, it was the most important town of the French islands, and it was known as the Little Paris. Its port attracted many ships and merchants from around the world. It was only in 1923 that they started redeveloping the whole area. The setting is outstanding, a big bay surrounded by lush tropical hills. Apparently there are about 12 shipwrecks dating from the eruption of 1902 scattered around the bay. There's a, a sculptor who has done some underwater sculptures. So we're gonna go and check them out. Well, we think that, um, we need to double check this, fact check, but we think that the sculptures are basically in commemoration of all the people who died uh, in 1902 here. Kind of symbolically under the water. Here we go! Try and find some wrecks? Yeah, apparently there's a wreck here from a boat that sank because of the volcano in 1902. And I'm talking to you in my mask. Alright, here we go. Though, when you think about it. Well, anyway, it's why don't we go that place. way? No luck finding any wrecks this time, but we did find some at a later date and found out that because most of the ships of that time were wooden, there weren't as many remains. So it's about 7.30 in the morning here and we've just moved over to a beach uh, not far from where the boat is. We left the boat down in uh, Prussia, a few miles away, and hopped in a car with some friends to Anskulov. And the plan today is to take a little fishing boat around. We're basically at the most remote part of Martinique. There's nothing really north of here until you reach uh, this other town. So there's this pocket in northwestern Martinique that's just completely uh, remote and there's a jungle there and apparently it's beautiful and we're gonna hike through it. So we're gonna take this fishing boat from here around to the town on the other side of the jungle and then hike back through the jungle. And it's about a six to seven hour hike apparently. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. It's raining a little bit, but that's all right. And we've got um, Homer here, who's just arrived in his uh, boat. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how he's going to get to the beach. <laughs> um, we thought he'd stood us up because he's 40 minutes late, but I guess um, I'm glad he's here anyway. So we're going to see. Uh, I have no idea how he's going to do this.
How are we feeling? Great. <laughs> Ready? Uh, Fair. My nerves are like this, so like, six hours! Woo <laughs> we're all a little bit nervous. I don't think we really realized what we were getting ourselves into. Six hours. 1300 meter climb up and down. All right, well, we're locked and loaded. Here it goes. They didn't manage to film in the end when the uh, when uh, Homer came in with the boat because it was all a bit hectic, but it actually worked really well. He put a bow anchor out and then reversed back into the beach so the bow was held against the waves. And then we waded out, stepped onto the back of his boat and he just pulled in on the anchor and off we went. Not bad. This hike was tropical. It was raining for about half the time, but it added to the atmosphere and luckily we didn't get cold at all. <laughs> a friend of ours, Ali from France, happened to be in Martinique at the same time as us. So we met up with her and another friend for the hike. After a full day's hike, we got back to Navica, and as the wind was good, we decided to sail overnight up to Les Saintes, which is a small island chain just south of Guadeloupe. We arrived just as the sun was rising on the horizon. It was perfect. That afternoon we went for a swim with Ali in the anchorage, curious to see what the sea life looked like around here. We went into town that evening and got to see a little carnival celebration happening. The next day we continued up north, stopping in an anchorage right next to the Cousteau Reserve, which we'd heard was great for diving and snorkeling. We were moving quite quickly through these stops, as we had plans to head back down south in a few weeks' time, so we would have more time to explore them properly then. For now though, we had a great first impression. <laughs> Nobody told us that it was gonna rain so much in the Caribbean. It's just been raining all the time. After fueling up on some pastries, we suited up and got in the dinghy to check out the Cousteau Reserve just off Pigeon Island. The visibility was amazing. The water was some of the clearest I've ever seen, and there was so much wildlife. Cool. Cool. I hit my deepest depth yet here, reaching 15 meters freediving, which I was so happy about. In hindsight now, this was the beginning of a whole journey in freediving that would unfold over the next months. Wow! Good job! 
that was amazing honestly some of the best underwater scenes we've seen since being on board Navica After a successful fun dive, we continued our journey north to Dee, which is the northernmost town of Guadeloupe, for our final evening on board with Ali. Thanks for watching this far guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to support us then give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Join us next time as we continue sailing north up to Antigua. We check out the famous Shirley Heights and have our first beach barbecue.